Now, don't be alarmed, but this is my slash music room man cave. And I got out of doing my guitar playing and I switched over to full-time enjoyment of my air guns. However, I decided I wanted to get back into messing around with my guitars and that's gonna kind of look like this. In the bottom here, I have a actual Fender Pro Reverb from 1966. It's been sitting there for, I don't know, three months now. I have not opened it up yet. But any rate, so I do have that older vintage amp for a great sound and tone. And um, so I'm going to get back into some stuff and maybe spend more time in a winter when you can't shoot your gun as much. But this is my slash man cave uh, music room and where the guns are all on racks now, that actually used to be all guitars. So I got another set of racks over here. There's only one good guitar left and that actually needs some work. And then my old Marshall stack is over here and I sold the head. So that's not happening anymore either. But anyway, there's all the air guns and stuff. These are actually only part of the air guns that I have. I have a stack upstairs and a um, bunch of hats and stuff all over the place down here all apart for different reasons but here's some guitar bodies now i just bought these a little while ago and i almost sold this body on ebay i'm going to make another guitar i used to build my own stratocasters i used to find the bodies make sure that the wood had the right energy if not i would sell it but this is a an all parts fiesta red body and that's an all parts maple neck and um, normally a Fiesta Red Strat, you'd have a rosewood neck, but I wanted something different this time. So I bought the neck. The guy does the nitro finish, nitro cellulose finish. I actually got another nut that he gave me. You can see it dangling on right there. Um, but this comes with the nut and the frets were supposed to be dressed and that nut's gonna go on there. Now I make my own bone nuts, but my eyesight has gotten to a point where I won't make them anymore because it's just too tedious for me to deal with it. But I used to make and cut my own vintage bone nuts and I used to do everything basically. So some of the strats I have are actually fantastic. Um, you would have thought they were made that way from the um, factory. Anyway, Scooter decide he wants to get in the picture. So anyway, now there's one guitar I'm gonna make um, and that neck fits so good that I, I just couldn't find myself to sell the body. I was going to give up on it, but um, he's just going to plop down right there. My gosh. At any rate, so um, that's going to be a, a cool guitar when I get to it. I'm going to save it for the winter. I've got lots and lots of parts left over for when I used to build these things. And I can make these things and, and pull them in to look really good. This guy here was a cheap uh, Squire. But the contours on the body were proper, the colors right, and believe it or not, I cannot stress enough, and I am very picky, but this cheap squire neck is actually fantastic. I can't believe it. And I think they made this one in where? Actually in Indonesia. The neck is actually very solid, actually very, very solid, and that rosewood just needs a little oil. So I got that, and it was cheap. I'm gonna rip this all apart, take all that crap out and put some real parts in it, some uh, vintage USA reissue parts and make a real good strat out of that. I'm not going crazy though. Here's some more guns over here. And um, I'm not going crazy though, uh, where I had all these strats that never got played and they got out of whack because the heat would make them expand and stuff. So here's a really nice gun. Have yet to shoot it, of course. Um, and don't mind my mess, but I got a lot of, of pellets and stuff down here. Here's some receiver tubes from two other guns. God knows what they are. I just have stuff, gun stuff, all over the place. That You know, you'll find your passion in life. And um, the, the, the guitars and playing that was cool. But, you know, the reality is I wasn't born and destined to be a guitar player other than the interest in the hobby. Over here is actually a brand new... I don't know if you can see or not, R9. And then there's a um, separate rifle, a separate barrel back there. I don't even know what that barrel's from, but it's from something. <laughs> but it's some really nice rifles we got here and um, have yet to go through most of them. Um, they're all vintage rifles. This one here is the uh, 124 Deluxe, bought from Mr. John Chippis. 
And then uh, John sold me this one too. This is a 25 millimeter 77K. Have yet to shoot it yet. Sorry, John, but been busy. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I thought in the winter time maybe I can get into some um, guitar stuff, and then in the summer I can enjoy the guns and stuff like like that. So that's that's what I was want to mess around with. And, and and don't get me, I'm no great player, but I've been playing since I was a teenager. I I kind of dig it, but it's time consuming. And, um, you know, we don't even use that word anymore. Now, just bear with me. I'm going to take you over to this other table, actually where I used to build the Stratocasters and do a lot of work. But I don't do it anymore. And this guy here is actually my childhood Strat. This is a real Strat. This is an actual 1966 Stratocaster. And here's the neck that goes with it. And it needs a luthier because the neck does not fit properly it's too it needs to be shimmed and i don't want to do it myself i mean i can and i have built my guitars and here, here's a little advice for doing guitar nuts and stuff it's tedious but uh, something like that you got to let the, the guy that actually mastered this profession let him do it if you hear what i'm saying but i had this neck refret it this is absolutely a fantastic fabulous neck it sounds like a, a piano it's actually you can't see it but it's, it's the reddish rosewood it's awesome. This this thing is toned for ages. But anyway, here's some more Aragon stuff. This is a Turkish Patriot, given that away to a friend of mine. Thought I had some work done too. Um, you can see the blocks all distorted. This one here is a 125 that I had powder coated, right, with a with a little handbrake on there. And uh, that's the stock that I did over for it. I don't remember anymore why we took guns apart and took stocks off. I know this one here I needs to get the barrel block reblued if, but I already have another Webley, so I'm giving this away to a friend of mine. Um, and that's part of uh, this is part of um, of our likes, the things that we we're into. The other side with the air guns is obviously working on them as well. So, by the way, this was done by an old school Fender refinisher who's up in Baldwinville, New York. And he did this carefully and I gave him the stencils to do it. But I am going to get this put together and um, I actually was going to give that hobby up. But you know what? I'm not. <laughs> I'll, I'll have, like I said, something to do in the winter time. Later on, I'll get into a video, maybe opening up the amp. I have the pictures of the inside of the chassis. I know what's right and what needs to be worked on, and and the speakers need to be swapped out. But that'll be cool. Anyway, you gotta enjoy the things you're into. And air guns, especially, is something I absolutely love. Not only the projects and working on them, but when I get a chance to actually shoot. So my plan is to basically work for a living and enjoy my air guns on the side for projects. And then in the winter, enjoy some guitar um, time with sitting down with guitar and working some songs out or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But anyway, that's it. Um, I think we'll wrap this little film up. I figured, let me just show you a little bit of, of this stuff that's going on. And this is just uh, the un part of um, just my little man cave desk there that um, more or less has been abandoned now. I don't even come down here much. And that's it. So let's see. Somebody out there said, hey, wait a minute. What gun was that? Well, that should be, this one here should be the, um, the R7 right? An old school R7. This is the old vintage 77K. That's a beautiful rifle. They're heavy, but the, the 77Ks are a little lighter. And this one here is an R10. I have two R10s and they're carbines. And that was the 124 Deluxe, an early model. And uh, let's see, what do we have down here? This is the R, other R10 that I have the vintage R10 in the refinished stock that didn't quite work out. The break in it actually came back and I need to get a stock for it down the road. So how and where I, what I do for that will be remains to be seen. Um, I believe this is my, this is a, oh yeah, that's the old Webley Turkish Patriot. 
and the only difference is it actually has a Hatson barrel on it but I have a Kodiak barrel for that now anyway there's some guns this one here is another Patriot but this is the Turkish Patriot with a really nice walnut stock this gun here is the newly required 35 vintage gun eh, it looks cool you know it's got a nice handbrake on it if you like this sort of stuff I'm sure you do um, I could have done without it, but I had to have it. The guy was selling, and I thought, let me go grab it. This is a really cool Hatson 95. Um, for me, I don't mind because I can work them, rebarrel them if I have to. But the wallet on this is actually very, very, um, it has everything going in it. It has beautiful grain. It has some tiger striping. It's, it's just full of everything. I'm going to do something to make that pop a little bit better. Over here we have another um, typical R9 that I actually just sold. That's the point .22, but I just sold it and I'm waiting for the money order. Here's a 125 receiver. Um, you know, I just have stuff all over the place. Probably like a lot of you guys out there. But anyway, I'm going to sign off. This is Mike saying, hope you enjoyed a little film. Take care.